Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stormfrax, and welcome to Faria, a brand new collectible card game currently in early access on Steam. I currently, I picked up this game a couple days ago, and I currently, I was just now able to play it. And I'm, I realize I'm saying currently a lot, but anyways, I'm going to try to focus on that. But anyways, I'm having a lot of fun with this game, and I really want to show you guys it. It is... A very, very unique game. It combines a lot of really unique elements from not only um, card games, but also board games and board strategy. It's all based on not only your cards, but also your placement on the board and how you attack and how, you know, which order you do things in. So it's, it's very, very unique, and I really have never seen anything like it. And this game has a whole lot of potential, honestly. It's, it has... A lot of potential and I'm really excited to bring you, this, you guys this game and I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and just get right into it um, first I'm actually gonna go ahead and take a look at the cards or give you guys a kind of idea what's going on with the deck so here we have our deck builder and we have all of our different cards uh, we have our neutral cards over here these are the uh, I guess it'd be, like, if you play Magic the Gathering, these would be, like, the color colorless cards, essentially. Um, over here, we have our green cards. We, now we have the blue ones, and we have our red, and we have our yellow. But more accurately, in this game, these ones are deserts, these ones are mountains, lakes, and forests. So, and the, and the, let's see, let's just start out with the top and go down from there, shall we? So the blue number up in the top left-hand corner is how much Faria it costs to cast this card. Now each turn you gain three Faria, and there are, another, there are a number of other factors in the game that I'll get into later um, that actually affect how much Faria you can gain each turn. Um, but at a very, at a completely base value, you gain three Faria e at the start of each of your turns. So. On turn number two, I can actually play a wood elemental, or turn two, I could play a seed sower, assuming I didn't play anything turn one. Now, going down from that, you see these little icons here. This has a one, this has a two, etc., etc. They're all right down below. So, now you see this one costs one forest. Now, it doesn't actually cost one forest. It, what it means is that on the board, on your hexa... hexa... Hey. hexa... Hexagonal? Hexagonal. I'm gonna call it hexagonal. On your hexagonal, hex, hexagonal, that's a tongue twister. Hexagonal board, <laughs> you need to have one forest of your own. You need to own one forest in order to play the wood elemental. Now, when you play the wood elemental, the forest is not used up. It stays exactly where it is. As long as you have one forest on the field somewhere, you can play a wood elemental without using it up. It's, it's not, it's never used up. Not like magic where you tap your lands in order to play something and then until your next turn those you can't use those lands again. Now, another thing to point out is that you can, in, ad in addition, you can only play the wood elemental um, on top of a forest. You cannot play it like on top of a plains or a, plains would be the neutral ones, rather. Uh, on top of a plains, or a mountain, lake, etc., etc. Yeah, wood elementals, and you know, everything that everything that costs forests or requires you to have a forest has to be played on top of a forest. That's, you have to place them on top of a forest. Um, and the same goes for all the other ones, of course. Now, now going down from that, on the left -hand bo bottom left-hand corner, you have their power, and bottom right-hand corner, you have their toughness. Now, similar to Hearthstone, uh, their toughness does not go up. Now, I'm sure there are probably, uh, I suppose, spells or abilities in the game that, that where you can heal your uh, heal your creatures. But otherwise, let's say, uh, let's say the Elderwood Hermit wax the Living Willow. Well, first of all, Elder Elderwood Hermit would die, but the Living Willow would go down to six health, and he would not go back up to seven at the beginning of the next turn. Now, of course, you can do other things. You can give it give it, you know, plus two, plus four, etc., etc., but their health does not regenerate, which is a very interesting point to keep in mind. Um, so that's kind of just the basics and just kind of an overview of the cards, and there's multiple different abilities the cards have, and we can kind of get into that as I actually play the game and show you guys what's going on. Now, this deck I have here is a red-green deck with some other kind of colorless cards uh, you know, it's just thrown in some other good cards. And it's not really 
any huge strategy behind this deck. I just kind of just chose a bunch of really good red and green cards, and they kind of just work together. I mean, I'm, I'm very new to this game, so I'm still figuring it out, but I've been able to get through the tutorial and the uh, campaign, quote-unquote, of the game with this deck for the most part. So, anyway, so let's go ahead and hop into a actual solo game here. Uh, just to kind of give you a big, give you guys a base overview of what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and face off actually against this neutral rush deck, since I actually have not played against a neutral deck while doing the campaign. So, anyways, here we are on the campaign map or on the battle map. I'm sorry, and we have our we play first. So here is our opening hands. Now keep in mind we get three Feria per turn, so I can play the Gift of Steel on turn one. I mean, it's completely pointless because I have to give it to a creature, and I don't have any creatures turn one, so, obviously. But, still, I have three Feria per turn, so turn two, I can play the Grimguard, or I can even play a Verd Verduran Force. But, what you have to keep in mind is that, while yes, I can play either of these turn two, I also have to have two Mountains or two Force for, this guy, for these guys. So I can only play one of them turn two. And the one I want to play turn two is probably going to be, while I really like the Grim Guard, uh, it's more of a defensive uh, creature because it has Taunt. Now what Taunt does, and we can actually, well, we'll get into it actually after I choose. I'm going to go ahead and actually just keep all, keep both of these. Eh, actually, let's get rid of Force. Let's, let's keep the Grim Guard. But anyways, what Taunt does, we'll grab the tooltip here. Oppos opponent's creatures adjacent to this one can't do anything else than attacking it. So let's say I have my Grim Guard like right here. Any creatures that are in any of the hexag any enemy creatures, my bad, that are in any of these hexagonals right around it, they cannot move and they cannot attack anything else without unless they attack the Grim Guard. So they can't move away and they can't attack anything else. They can only attack my Grim Guard if he's standing right there. Which, is, which makes it so that you can easily lock down the board in a certain area. And it definitely lends into your strategy greatly. Um, production does something at the start of each of your turns, so it's just kind of every upkeep. If you play Magic, you know what your upkeep is. But I suppose I would kind of broaden into this game as well. But on your upkeep, it gains plus one, plus one, if it has less than five life. This little seedling here is a really awesome card. I really like this card. Just like s slap it down, turn one, and just watch it grow. It's so awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and start out here. And as over here, we also have our, uh, I guess, wheel of fortune. I'm gonna call it that. But anyways, it's more more things you can do each turn. Now each turn, I get I can do one of these. I can only do one. So I can put down I can put down two planes, or I can put down one forest, one mountain, one uh, desert, or I can gain one Feria, or I can draw one card, or I can put down a lake, rather. And you can only do one of these per turn. You always want to, you always want to make sure you do this, because, I mean, you, well, you have to, otherwise it won't let you end, end the turn, but it definitely adds some interesting points to the game, because that means you can actually draw two cards per turn, or you can actually gain a Feria per turn, but that also means that you won't be able to put down a land that turn. But, you know, it's, it adds more strategy to the game. It just broadens the horizons greatly. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually start out with a forest here. I'm going to go actually straight into the Verdun Force, Verdurin Force, because I really want to put down the seedling. So I'm just going to put down the seedling right here. And I'm going to put him down, and voila. I'm going to go ahead and end the turn. But before I do that, I actually want to point out these things here, these wells, if I put my creatures right next to these wells, any in any of the adjacent tiles, they will um, gain a f extra feria for me every turn. Now, let's say let's say I put another something down here, and then I move the seedling over here. You will also gain a feria for me. So another a little kind of cool trick you can do is that if you're able to get a creature into either one of these, you can start hopping in between each of these wells every turn and gain two extra feria per turn. So you're not getting three per turn, you're getting five per turn. And that just ups your production value. And makes it so you can just cast more and more creatures every turn. And it just 
it, once again, it just adds another layer to the game. And it's just really, really cool. So we're going to go ahead and just end the turn here. And we're going to see what he's going to do. He's just going to put down two planes, looks like. He's got three Feria. He's going to play an Explorer, which gains, which means he can put down and gets another Prairie. Or not planes, I'm sorry. They're Prairies, my bad. And he gains two more Feria, in which case he plays the Mace Man. So he looks like he's just going straight for my face. So... What am I going to do here? Um, he can still only move. Creatures can only move once tile. I'm going to call them tiles now. It's much easier to say. They can only move one pile per turn unless stated otherwise. Unless they have an ability that allows them to do uh, more. Allows them to move more. And that ability would be called charge. And there's different levels of charge. There's like charge 2, charge 4, charge 3, I'm sure. Somewhere. I think I've only seen like 2 and 4. But anyways. And that means they can move two or however many it is spaces in a straight line so if he had like let's say he had charge two he can move from here to here or here or here um in one turn but also that means but in addition there has to be actually land here he can't just go swimming um but again like i really don't want to get like too much into it because there's just so many different abilities that just broaden the horizons, because there's some abilities that allow creatures to swim. They just swim in the ocean. They don't need land. They can just go swimming everywhere. There's some abilities that allows them to hop. They're not actually, like, charging through it. They, like, hop over. They, like, go from here to here with avoiding here. So it's, it's just, like, completely nuts. and can just, like, avoid stuff. And there's just so many different abilities, and that's just, like, kind of, like, just scratching the surface. There's just, like, there's flying. There's haste. Um... There's Death Touch. There's... I mean, there's just... It's, this game... Holy crap. I, I really, 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 really like this game. So, anyways. We're gonna go ahead... And we're at 4 Fairy right now. And we can only get up to 5 this turn. We can't play a Grim Guard. And kind of wish I didn't draw the other one. But... We're gonna go ahead and just place another Force down. There you go. Right there. So we can play our Verdant Force. Next turn. And block off the advance of his of his mace man and we're actually soon hopefully soon we're gonna go ahead and put a tile here and hopefully get our sat seedling over here to start gaining extra feria per turn so we're gonna go ahead slap the verdant force down and let's see here go ahead and what else uh actually i can put a mountain here the mountain there, that one's gonna start getting my Grim Guards up sooner. I'll move him over there, and look, I gain an extra Feria that turn. And I'll gain another extra Feria on my next turn. So I'll have four Feria next turn, or actually I'll have uh, six, rather. So next turn, I could slap down another. Well, that's just disappointing. Yeah, and, and there's just, there we go, there's another e example. I did this, but then he created the land here, move over here, and killed my seedling. So that was disappointing, but the way it goes. So, these guys have taunt, though. So, you know, let's create a mountain here. And slap you down there. And let's just go ahead and do that. It might not have been the best idea. Maybe I could have actually put the Grim Guard over here and killed the 4-4. And then just left the 4-2 to, like, kill him. That way, they just killed each other. And, you know, stuff happened. But, you know, oh well. It is what it is. So, anyways, this guy has... And then there's Gift. This is another something that... Another really important um, ability. A, what a Gift does is that when the creature... It's, it's an enter the battlefield ability. It's, that's literally what it is. When the creature enters the battlefield, this thing happens. That's, that's literally what it happens. Or it says... Or more specifically, it says... Does something when you play this card from your hand, but it's essentially when it enters the battlefield. So, now we have the Kobold Barracks... And that's another interesting thing, because it's not actually a creature. It literally just sits there in one place on the battlefield. I don't think you can move it. I'm not sure. I've, I haven't tried, though, admittedly. No, I don't think you can move it. I'm not, it's not a creature, so you can't move it. And adjacent friendly creatures have plus two, plus zero, but it just adds another layer. You can just have, like, buildings around on your map that just do really cool things. And that's just an example of one. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and let's put the Grim Guard down there. Yeah, let's just do that. It's not really the best of starting outs, but we'll, we're doing okay. We're doing all right. So let's go ahead and slap down a forest over here. And I'm going to end the turn and see how this goes. 
All right, so yep. So he, so he dealt com combat damage, I'm sorry, to the Grim Guard, and the Grim Guard has an interesting ability called uh, combat. And every time this creature goes into combat, whether he's attacking or defending, something happens. In this case, he deals two damage to my opponent. That's really awesome when the creature also has taunt. It means that I'm like whacking my opponent every time he gets attacked, and he's forced to be getting, forced to be getting attacked because he's got taunt. So it's just awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and slap down a seedling right there. And... Might as well slap down the Cobalt Barracks right there. Let's see here. Uh, let's go ahead and put slap down... Two prairies right there. and goes to end the turn. So I kind of wanted to start moving up, but I've kind of been delayed a bit. So, you know. It is what it is. Okay. Now this guy has haste, which means you can attack, harvest, and move the turn I play it. And harvest would be would mean getting these feria from the uh from the wells here. So okay, I need another Damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay. Wait, how did he die? How did sampling die? What happened? Oh, he falcon died by sapling. Well, that's just disappointing. All right, so I kind of need more my wood elemental out. All right, let's go ahead and just gain extra feria, and let's go ahead and put our, down our wood elemental, which also gains us a forest. So I'll just slap one down right over there, right next to the enemy. So that's actually another really cool point to point out. If you're like really clever with the way you do this, you can end up putting down lands literally right next to the enemy, which means you can start summoning creatures right next to the enemy to attack them right next turn. And it's just, it's another just really cool thing you can do. And, alright, um, alright, we might as well just do that. I, I don't like to. Let's just go put them down here to gain an extra farrier per turn. And, alright, let's go ahead and... So let's go and claim. Oh, I can't claim those. Well, shit. Claim that one. And that one might as well. All right. And in the turn. So this guy has another interesting. It's this guy essentially has death rattle. Last words. Deal two damage to all creatures. When he dies, he deals two damage to all creatures. It's death rattle basically. Um, healing song. Draw a card. Gain for life. I don't need to gain life. I don't need to draw a card either. Right, let's go skate. Put a fairy out. Move him so I can put down the brood there. And all right, let's see how this game goes, shall we? I'm not. This isn't looking good. I'll tell you that much, though. I think I might actually end up losing this, but this essentially is just to showcase you guys what the game's about and how it plays. Although this is a little embarrassing that I'm losing, but you know, oh well. We'll see how it goes, shall we? So, okay, all right. I could give him plus two, plus four. Because the 6-5 is irritating. Alright, um... Let's put another mountain there. Okay, let's go ahead and embrace him. Embrace him a 5-10. Let's take that out. Let's move him over there. Now I can start getting both of these per turn. And now I'm going to start moving my sh Shedium Brute up to here to whack this guy, so hopefully this works out in my favor. And now actually I also have this forest up here, so not next turn, or maybe next turn, actually. Let's see, I got three, four, five, yeah, next turn I will be able to get my Verdian force right in here and just start whacking the guy for seven every turn. So you got a five, six, or I'll stick down our queen's assassin here. That's for sure. Oh shit, I <laughs> Yeah, let's just take care of that war yak. That's okay. All right. Uh, now, unfortunately, I can't really run from the war yak because let's see, if I move here, he can just attack me. If I move here, he can move down and attack me. So really, I might as well move back. Let's see if he chases me. Hopefully, he'll just attack into the queen's assassin, but we'll see. Like, I did kind of mess up there. I really should have just played the Verdian Force and just went for face next turn, but that's all right. That's kind of, that's all right. Not the greatest of ideas. Let's go ahead and just draw an extra card this turn. I do have Gift of Steel now. That is something to definitely take into consideration 
As for when I put my Verdian Force down. And okay, he just goes straight for that guy. Alright, that's okay. At least next turn, I can just Queen's Assassin him. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Um. Yeah, you see, this is actually a, a thing. Yeah, Verdian Force. Because now I'm threatening him. He's at 10 life, and I can actually give my Verdant Force plus 3 plus 0 next turn to immediately kill him. But even without that, even without him knowing I have the Gift of Steel, I've just slapped down a 7-7 seven, seven, one turn away, or really two turns away from killing him. And now he has all these guys here. He's got a 5-1 and a 4-5, but I still am at 20 health. It's going to take him a lot longer. Well, actually, no, it's not. <laughs> but I still have this play, Queen's Assassin here, so I still have this guy, so I'm going to go and do that anyways. But it, still, it threatens him, is, is the point I'm trying to make. It threatens the guy and makes it so that he really has to think about, like, do I want to go on the attack or do I want to pull back a bit and go on the defensive? So I'm going to stop talking here for a little bit and just kind of finish this game up. Let's go through, hit that there, and we all pretty much know how this game's gonna go. So anyways guys, I will leave you to watching the rest of this game. It's going the last couple minutes, but anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought about the video, if I thought I did okay, if I stuttered too much, if I was if I was explaining things enough. Let me know how I did. If you liked the video, let me know if you like playing this game. Let me know what you think about this game. And anyways guys, leave a like. I think I said that. But anyways guys, <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video, and as always, have a good day. Alright, go ahead and. Yeah. Move. Oh, wait, he's got the put. Yeah, he put the taunt down. Son of a whore. Well, that's just a problem. That's just annoying. Okay. Crap. Can't move him, though. Shit. <sighs> Crap. Alright, fine, fine. There. There. Start moving you over. Make a forest. And. Alright, there we go. Uh, whatever, just do that. And the turn. Better not play another fucking taunt. Really? Really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait another time! Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Oh my gosh. You are just cruising for a bruise in there, bud. Alright. Draw a card. What do we got? Just whatever. End the turn. Okay, no more taunts this time. Come on. No more taunts. Alright, there we go. Move him up. Plus three, plus out. And boom. Alright, there's the game. Finally. Holy crap.